Hello and welcome back once again, people. In order to try to keep a consistent stream of videos going around here while I finish up working on some other projects, I want to throw in like a few uh, little random uh, bits of uh, stuff here and there. So today I thought we'd actually do a uh, teardown and look inside of this uh, Futaba Digital Proportional RC system. Now, this is like a very uh, vintage uh, transmitter and like receiver set. And uh, this is actually is, is like a kit that comes with the like the controller. It comes with the little receiver and it comes with a few servos. And if you took a look at the side of the box right here, we see that the model number for this is FP-6FN-S26. And uh, there's not a whole lot here on the box. Uh, we can see right here that it says that it was uh, made in Japan. And then right here it says uh, Futaba Industries uh, 72.320 uh, megahertz. And there's uh, really not much else to look at. And there's like absolutely uh, nothing in the back. So everything that's going to show us anything at all about this thing is going to be <laughs> inside the box itself. Now, as far as I'm aware, I don't think that this would be uh, technically like legal to use um, nowadays. I think it's got something to do with the uh, type of frequency that it uses. It's uh, I don't know if it's like considered like 72 megahertz bands or in like the 75 megahertz range or something like that. But I saw a little blurb somewhere about something that said that it's like too wide band or something like that in order um, to be allowed to be used and nowadays. But I'm no expert on this stuff or anything, so I really could not give you like any details about that. So what we can do here, though, is take this out of the box and look at what's inside. And now hopefully I don't sound a little too nasally in this video because uh, I seem to have come down with a little something and... My voice doesn't exactly sound all that great right now, so hopefully that'll get better soon. But hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. So here we go. This is with the sleeve removed. We've got a manual here. So this is that 6FN, so this is a 6 channel, but this looks like it was also available on a 5 channel, 4, and a 3 channel. So not going to really go into detail here on this men uh, menu, on this uh, manual. But I guess we can just like kind of quickly uh, flip through the pages here. So features of the new Futaba proportional radio control system. And oh, this has a apparently it's got a connector that can be used as like a with another controller from, to use, be used as like a training system. So if you're like just learning to fly or whatever, because I believe that that's what this was mostly meant for, for like um, little model planes and whatnot. You could have another controller of somebody that actually knows what they're doing. And so they can take over in case, you know, you're like losing control or whatever. So it actually says right here that the training system provided as a standard makes uh, training of beginners easy. Actually, I just realized this here because I hadn't, I hadn't actually looked at this manual myself, but it actually talks about the ICs that are used inside of the servos. So it says the, um, the three wire compact, lightweight, rugged, high output torque servo arms have been realized through the use of Futaba BA-687 and VA-686 custom monolithics IC. And then it explains that this uh, 687 monolithic IC is a 12-pin single-end line IC containing 73 transistors, 13 diodes, and 79 resistors, for a total of 165 components. So yeah, then it goes into specifications, uh, receiving bands, the transmitter, <laughs> nickel cadmium charger. This thing has nickel cadmium batteries in it. And there's images of the uh, different transmitters how to uh, like uh, connect all this stuff to the receiver. It talks about the trainer system right there, operating instructions, and how to charge the uh, nickel cadmium battery, performance test and mounting precautions, uh, Futaba proportional frequencies. So it's this is okay. So this is considered like a 72 megahertz uh, system. So it looks like it goes all the way up to the 75s though. So, and there's the guarantee. Your new Futaba Digital Proportional RC system is guaranteed against defects in workmanship and materials for 180 days from the date of purchase. <laughs> so this is, a, I think it's a little a tad beyond its uh, guarantee time there. And then uh, you can get factory repair service, although I kind of doubt you can for this thing nowadays. So that's uh, that. Let's go ahead and take this cover off. So that comes off like that. Nothing on the underside, just some... Uh, areas here for uh, to maintain everything in its uh, proper place and uh, there it is so that's the uh, transmitter unit this is the antenna and this thing is like one of those like super long antennas here that i'm not even going to be able to fit in between the <laughs> area of the camera and the i could almost touch the lens right there and that's about um close to about four feet of height between the uh, surface of the uh workbench here and the uh, camera so Pretty, pretty long antenna there. And that has a uh, 
base right here that screws onto that nub on the controller. Let's go ahead and pull this out. You can see that this just screws on in there like that. So this thing is a uh, pretty heavy. It's got quite a bit of heft to it. And we see we got our little joysticks there. This is going to be for like throttle and then like, I don't know, side to side uh, controls and stuff like that. Uh, right side right there, it's a little button. Got a switch up here. This uh, little meter, I believe, is for the uh, battery. Uh, on and off switch right there. Got this little uh, set of bumps right here. I get it. Uh, that's, I think that's for a, I think that's for a strap. Like you can put it on there and then, like, you know, you can use it to like hold it up while you're using it. You know, a little baggy or something. Oh, it's just empty bag right there. And then right here at the bottom, we've got this little interface port. That's the one that's used for uh, training purposes. We've got a bunch of like little trimmers right here. So you can adjust like the servo positions like uh, fine, a little more finely there. Uh, charging port for the internal battery, because as you can see, there's like no way to open this up and get the batteries out. Uh, we are going to have to remove some screws here in order to take a look at what's inside of the controller. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we can see right there on the controller side. Let's set it aside. See what else we've got here in this box. So this here is the six channel receiver. And we can see that some of the stuff here is uh, labeled. Uh, so like RUD, that would be like rudder. Uh, what's that, elevators? Is that what they're called? Not entirely sure. Probably sound like a fool right now. <laughs> uh, throw, that'd probably be throttle. Uh, AL, that's uh, probably the uh, ailerons, uh, battery. And it's got two auxiliary uh, ports right there. And it still has a crystal installed. I don't know if this is what's actually like labeled on the box. Although this one, this was going to be slightly different. This is the uh, 72.320 megahertz. So the crystal inside of the controller, I guess it's going to be like, uh, it's not removable. So you'd have to open it up. But inside there's probably going to be that 72.320 uh, megahertz uh, transmitter uh, crystal. Usually the, um, the transmitter frequency is higher than the receiver frequency. So I don't know if this crystal is actually uh, that frequency or it's just labeled that that's what the... Uh, you know, that's um, going to match the, or that this is the matching crystal for the, the transmitter. Okay, I'm getting myself all tied up here. I, I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. So anyways, this appears to be uh, what's labeled on the box. And uh, so these two uh, work together. And if you wanted to uh, change it to a different frequency, you'd have to change the crystal inside of the controller here and the crystal on the receiver. So that's that. Even this feels uh, pretty uh, hefty there. So it's got quite a bit of electronics inside of it. So we'll take a look inside of that as well. And then right here, we've got this uh, NICAD battery. And it's kind of uh, interesting to note that there's no visible like leakage coming out of this package or anything. But these batteries are way past their uh, expiration date. So this is the uh, receiver power pack. And it's type uh, NR-4C. So no mention as to uh, its like capacity or anything. So we got C. We've got three wires going into it. That's kind of interesting. I thought it was only going to be like two. So, yeah, that's that. This here is the NICAD charger. And we can see right inside of there, we've got a little transformer. And on the other end of that, we see we've got two uh, barrel connectors right there. So this can be used to uh, charge the uh, controller and the battery pack for the receiver at the same time, apparently. And so for that, looks like we've got the adapters right here. So this would be the adapter for the battery. So this would plug in there. And then this battery pack would plug into here. And it looks like for charging, it doesn't actually use uh, all three wires. It only uses the red and the black. So it just plugs in like that. And that would charge the uh, receiver battery. And so then right here, we've got the other cord. And this is basically just a, like a female to female connector. So that would just go into like the other port. And then you would just plug that into here. And there you go. That's how you would charge the uh, controller and the receiver at the same time. And here is the strap that I was talking about. So this looks like it was never used. And there's like little flakes of something in there. It's falling apart. Oh, it looks like maybe the uh, these little buckles here were like coated with something. And that just like <laughs> completely uh, just disintegrated in there. So these would just, uh, like I said, latch around these little metal like uh, tabs right there. So this you could like, you know, like wrap around your neck and then that would help you like stabilize this. So the weight of this wasn't like, you know, pulling down on your uh, like arms and like fatiguing them and all that stuff. So you could like stay there uh, uh, playing with this longer. 
in here what else we do do we have we've got some okay so this just looks like it's a uh, little adapters this looks like it was never used either it's still sealed and it's even got the tape there that originally like held it into the packaging it looks like so probably little linkages and stuff i'm guessing and looks like maybe some servo adapters like to uh raise their height or secure them somehow looks like looks like it's got some uh, little bushings and screws uh these got these little rubber grommets there looks like those are for maybe like uh, shock absorption uh, some washers some other little screws so yeah it looks like a lot of this was never used got a little something right here what the heck is it oh it's a screw <laughs> there's a little screw jam in there into the uh, styrofoam with the washer so yeah that right there I don't know if this came out of the bag or... No, it doesn't look like it would have come out of the bag, so... I don't know about that. Although there is another bag here with some more stuff. That also looks like it was never opened. Was this thing even ever used at all? <laughs> I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe... It wasn't all that used. Although the servos do look like they've got some use on them, so... Perhaps it was. So this looks like a container for a servo of sorts. I don't know what exactly would have been used for, but it pretty much has a lot of the same hardware that was in the, the other little pack here. So let's just uh, set that aside there. Got some more like wheels and uh, adapters there for servos. This one here for sure looks like it was open, so that was used. We'll just put this screw here in this bag there so we don't lose it. Got a few other little bags here. More of the same kind of stuff. So it looks like all these were open, maybe to uh, get these uh, adapters here out. In order to use them, they probably all came with these these little uh, bags here. I'm wondering if that's what this label here was for. I'm not sure, but this is apparently a uh, a Dubro, world's finest model products uh, items here, and it cost uh, 98 cents back in whenever this was made. Catalog number 121, and this says uh, easy connectors with reusable nylon snap-ons. So one more little bag of that, those right here. And as we see, we also got a four servos. So I guess that makes sense. And then we got some other uh, stuff just kind of lingering around on here. We got another little package that was never opened. And this looks like it was, uh, I could get it unstuck there. So this was like replacement knobs for the, for the joysticks here. So I don't know if these just uh, unscrew out or if they just, no, they just come off. So you can see that actually they're not just replacement. Uh, placements they're longer so i guess you could adapt them depending on like how you know far your thumb sat or whatever it provided like a little bit of um adjustability right there so yeah those were never used either and then we just got some uh, labels here for uh maybe labeling like the like the servo motor cables i'm assuming like you take this and like wrap it around that way you could tell like which servo was what and make them like easier to identify so that's a uh, pretty neat that they included that Another little baggie here that has nothing in it. What is this? Okay, this is a flag. So this is, um, I'm assuming, most likely for identifying like what frequency you're running so that other people, you know, if they're also flying their uh, little model planes or whatever, could tell you what frequencies are in use. And they could um, adjust theirs accordingly so that they don't interfere with what you've got or you don't interfere with what they've got. So I don't know if this is actually supposed to be like a pink or if it's faded but that's what's in the box so <laughs> it looks like it's pink what else is hiding in here oh this is the other flag so this one definitely looks much more faded so maybe this was like on the uh, actual plane or whatever and it's uh yeah gotten uh pretty light over time so not entirely sure to be honest and looks like that's it for that the heck we have a, <laughs> a little button in here this happened to be in the box so these are the servos themselves. So these are uh, the FP9 uh, or S26s. We'll take a look inside of those as well and see what uh, that I see that they uh, were talking about in there is or what it looks like. And these are all the same except this one here is a uh, FP-S26L. Not sure what the difference is. Maybe a uh, large, like maybe it can handle a little more torque or something. Can't tell if there's a weight difference between these two or not. We'll open these up individually and see what uh, the difference is because these other two right here are the same as that one. So those are probably going to be all uh, identical. Well, the quickest thing here to take a look inside of is probably going to be the receiver. That only has two screws. 
So we can just remove those. And I think I might need to remove this crystal here in order to get it to come out. Oh, no. Oh, man. That's a bummer. The little piece of paper that you're supposed to use there to pull it out broke. So I'm just going to try to gently pull it out with this right here. These little forceps. There we go. Wasn't too hard. Oh, that kind of sucks. Oh, well. I guess you could always, like, tape it on with a little bit of a clear tape or something. But there we go. So now this cover here looks like it'll come out. And there we go. So <laughs> nothing but analog goodness, it seems like. Bunch of uh, uh, like IF cans or um, like little filter cans. That There's the connector for the uh, crystal. And there's a much closer look. So there is an IC. There's a little IC under there underneath that big uh, electrolytic capacitor. Luckily, uh, that electrolytic doesn't appear to have been leaking because it would be right over that IC and it would probably corrode all those legs. I don't know if we're going to be able to see what that IC actually is without really moving this capacitor out of the way. Uh, yeah, I can kind of see it right there. Looks like it's a uh, sharp IC. Let's see if we can remove this board here from this bottom case. Take a look at the bottom there. So, oh, wow, it's all uh, tin plated. And actually, it looks like it was just dipped in solder. So the entire bottom side there is covered in solder. And we can see how all the uh, outputs to the servos here go over to uh, like that side right there. And that's all going to those capacitors. So it looks like they're probably providing a little bit of filtering for the uh, PWM signal going out to the to the servos. So and this all over here is going to be like the like the AM or like front end for receiving the pulses coming from the uh, transmitter and filtering all that out filtering like carrier frequency and all that i'm uh no expert on radio circuitry whatsoever so i can't even like begin to explain how that's going to work but it looks like everything here is sort of like in a row so it looks like the antenna comes in right there probably goes through that like first um transformer right there and then it like kind of filters or not filters but like goes off in this direction yeah because it looks like all this right here is like a strip of stuff right there and as you can see, it goes off in this direction. It doesn't look like there's much going off here this way, at least not in this section until it gets to like down here. So it almost looks like they've kind of kept like functional blocks together. So as part of like the receiving end right here, this all goes off into uh, like doing some more of the filtering. And we see we've got a few uh, transistors in there. We got one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, uh, seven. Uh, very few electrolytics in here. This one's probably going to be for like the main uh, like power filtering where the battery comes in. And then we've got a few other ones over here. So I was able to see the number there on that IC, and it's an IR2501 chip there made by Sharp. So it looks like maybe this was like a uh, custom-made IC. Uh, nothing came up when I looked for it. It like, tries to like come up with like international rectifier, like MOSFETs or uh, some other components like that. And that's definitely not what this is. So probably a uh, custom made back in the day for a uh, Futaba for a uh, uh, purpose use in uh, receivers like this. And as you can see, you know, like all the outputs are on one side. So all the input stuff's going to be on uh, this side. And it actually looks like it doesn't even use like all the pins or it's not that it doesn't use all the pins, but they don't all come out on this side. Some of them probably come out from underneath and then they go off and do like other directions. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, as far as the receiver goes, it's, there's no way that we're going to be able to like reverse engineer and all this stuff. It's going to be like way too complicated and everything's like so compact that it's hard to uh, look at some of this stuff. So, but we can at least see what's inside of it. And as far as this goes, that's what's inside of it. And now let's take a look at the uh, charger. This is not going to be anything uh, crazy, I don't believe. I really doubt that there's actually going to be like any uh, transistors or anything like that inside of here. And looks like these right here might not even need to come out. Looks like maybe they're just holding the transformer in place. So it looks like it's maybe just this middle one there that holds it all shut. Yep, exactly how it is. So there we go. That's the little transformer. You see if you've got power here coming in, it looks like it goes through that fuse. And then it goes off into the transformer. So that's going to be like the primary side. That's going to be the secondary side. So got a couple or yeah, a couple of these um, older style looking resistors right there. And then we've got some of these other ones for a total of six resistors. So if we take off this, uh, these two screws right there, we can see what's on the other side of the board, which I'm kind of doubting is anything. I don't see anything just looking at it from the side. So 
kind of interesting how the fuse holders here is like mounted on this other little board and then the entire thing is mounted onto the that main board there so no idea why they would have done that all right here we go so yeah no surprises it's just traces so very very simple circuitry that was uh used to charge NICAD batteries and then we just got some uh, leds uh, going to the the top of the case there to like indicate that they are uh, charging oh and these are actually labeled as to which one's which so that's the uh, transmitter and that's the receiver so the uh the two outputs are different one's a 9.6 so that's going to be for the transmitter the other one is a 4.8 and that's going to be for the receiver because this is definitely not a, a 9.6 volt battery so yeah i hadn't really noticed that that you need to needed to plug those into the uh the appropriate output so as far as the charger goes yep that's pretty much it all right so let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, servos now and they both uh, look pretty much uh, identical we just have four screws in the bottom there to remove and these are like a really really like coarse thread screws as you can see here as i turn it it just immediately starts popping out and that's it it's all the way out so they're pretty uh quick and easy to remove not entirely sure why these were done that way but it seems a lot of servos are designed this way at least from the ones that i've seen so this is the that's just the regular s26 uh numbered servo and one of these screws did not release completely there we go so pretty big motor well there's the little board there so that's that i see that they're talking about actually there's two of them so as far as a servo goes uh, nowadays you don't see a whole lot of stuff in them anymore because everything's so compact and like stuffed into like one little ic got some foam right here kind of padding everything let's go ahead and remove that and there we go so we've got two ic's a bunch of resistors looks like some tandem capacitors some ceramic disc caps right there we got one electrolytic right there off to the side that's going to be probably for like filtering the input and there's a potentiometer for detecting like the uh, positioning of the uh, the output here i was kind of hoping i'd be able to pull the motor out but i kind of can't it probably has some screws over on the other side I don't know if this part of the gear case here is going to come off. I probably have to remove this. And so this here has a, a square shaft output there. Usually all the other ones I've seen are kind of like more of a splined output. So this was a, a bit different back in the day, I guess. And there we go. And that's the gear train in there. Oh, is that broken? What is that? Just grease. Oh, that's just grease. Okay, so yeah, it looks like none of the gears inside here are broken. So this uh, servo would still be like uh, fully functional. So overall, it looks like it's in a pretty good condition, despite its age. Actually, I actually don't even know how old this is, to be honest. Yeah, I don't see any dates anywhere, so I really don't know how old this thing is. But if we remove this gear, and we remove this gear right here, we can see that the uh, motor is uh, screwed into the case so in order to remove that motor we'd have to remove like those screws right there but i mean there's really not much else going on with that like the little motor in here or anything like that so i'm not going to bother with that but that's what's inside of the uh the fp-s26 uh, servo let's quickly take a look at what's inside of the s26l servo we'll see what the uh difference is if it's uh, noticeable at all so I keep calling these adapters. I think the correct term is a horn, like the servo horn, and then the other ones are like the servo arms. Okay, so I'm actually going to omit a lot of the video that I recorded uh, comparing the uh, two servos because uh, I could not tell like any physical difference between the uh, S26 and the S26L. But if I would have read the freaking manual to begin with, I would have realized that the FP uh, S26L is a reversible servo. So when I actually went back to look at it, to see the difference, uh, sure enough, it turns out that the um, the regular S26 servo, uh, the potentiometer there is wired brown, blue, and white. And on the uh, L version, it's wired uh, white, blue, and brown. So that's how it's reversible because the uh, potentiometer there is wired differently. So the motor has to uh, spin in a different direction to satisfy the, the pulse width that it's receiving in order to be able to match it. And as we can see here, the uh, positive and the negative leads are also switched. So this one here has a positive on this side, whereas this one has it on this side. 
This one has the negative on that side, and this one has the negative on that side. So that's the only difference is that it's uh, basically a reverse of the uh, regular uh, numbered servos. All right, and now for the one that's probably going to contain the most amount of uh, interesting looking stuff, the transmitter. So let's go ahead and remove the four screws off out of each side. All right, and there we go. Both sides are out, and this thing is attached. All right, we'll just uh, kind of leave that off to the side there. And so it looks like it's got these two little buttons here that protrude from this bottom piece to snap this together. So like that will come off just like that it's not completely releasing there we go okay so the bottom cover can just completely come off and not a whole lot of stuff on that we see we've got two nuts right there and those are just holding this little sort of like stand there that allows you to put the controller down just like that and it's only got one position it appears so it's either closed or it's like that so that's it for that now let's see what's all on here. And this is still pretty heavy just by itself. So there's the battery pack. And even on that, they provided a small connector there. So that would have been easy to change back in the day. I was a little worried that maybe there'd be like a bunch of uh, corrosion in here, depending on how these batteries were installed. But it looks like since it's all self-contained, it's pretty easy to take care of. Oh, and it looks like if you wanted to change the frequency, all you had to do was pop this side out, and that would give you access to the crystal right there. So, looks like this has never been removed. And whoa, that thing is like all flaky and crispy. So, <laughs> not going to mess with that too much. But there it is. So, that's the uh, transmitter crystal that just fits into uh, that connector right there. So, removing the two screws here for the battery pack loosens it up. It looks like we can just slide it out the side there. So that's the 9.6 volt battery pack for the transmitter. It looks like it's all sealed in there. So it's probably containing all the leakage from those NICAD batteries, if any. Actually, not even. This is coming apart quite easily. Oh, there we go. Actually, yeah. There's the leakage. I knew there had to be some leakage from these batteries. So these batteries are definitely no good anymore. That's the leakage we know and love from NICAD batteries. <laughs> it's all fuzzy right there on that on that contact. There's the uh, lid side. You can see we've got some uh, little crystal residue in there. So, yeah, I'm just going to set that aside. A couple of little quick things here that I kind of forgot to bring up uh, in the middle of the video, so I'm recording them after the fact. But it appears that the three wires that go to the, each battery pack are not actually uh, being used. Uh, not all three. The gray one here looks like it doesn't go to anything on the uh, 9.6 volt pack it was just kind of tucked in here underneath the tape and so i'm assuming that it's going to be the same thing on the smaller pack here but i don't want to tear the uh, tape off so i think what must have happened is that they had these uh, connectors like pretty much already like pre-populated and they already had the wires and everything and so all they did was uh, reuse those they didn't use the gray wire because um in like none of the equipment does it actually hook up to anything so they, instead of just getting rid of it and um, cutting it off, they just uh, left it on and tucked it in inside. So that's uh, pretty much what they had done there. And also regarding the NICAD battery charger, uh, I realized that there was no other diodes and obviously there's no electrolytics in here. So it appears that the LEDs themselves are the ones that are being used as the rectifiers for the battery because it's not like you're going to be able to uh, charge the batteries on AC current. So that's uh, the only thing in here that would provide any sort of directionality is those LEDs. So it appears that's how they did it. And that's the back side of the board there. So pretty nicely la laid out. You see, we got a lot of uh, kind of a square looking uh, traces and kind of diagonal as well. So this looks like a bunch of like a ground plane. We see we've got stuff here that's labeled one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's probably like additional trimming, maybe like the oscillators for the servos or something. Yeah, a bunch of trimmers. Looks like these are also some trimmers there. We got four, uh, maybe five, or that might be something else. No, that that does appear to be a like a trimmer capacitor or something. Maybe that's for actually um, like trimming the uh, frequency of the output. So it looks like if we remove these four screws, we can take a look at the other side of the board. Part of the reason why this is so heavy, it's got this other metal plating in here. And there's that interface there for the uh, trainer. 
Looks like that's got some, um, what are those, uh, maybe like some PTCs or whatever in case something shorts out, doesn't damage anything. And that uh, appears to be using a total of four wires. So one's probably definitely going to be ground. I don't know about the other three. Because if you've got a battery in this uh, in um, this transmitter and then you've got a battery in the trainer transmitter, then you probably don't need to be providing power to uh, each unit. So, yeah, let's go ahead and remove those four screws. Oh, and these, they've uh, kind of put inside of this, these uh, sort of like little cups there. And I think that's just to space them off, um, to provide a little bit of spacing between the board and the back case. So you can't push on the back here and have that make contact with the back of the board there. So that provides a little bit of uh, insulation. So this is loose now, and it doesn't appear that I'm going to be, no, not without removing this wire right there. That goes to the antenna. So this stuff here, yeah, definitely appears to be part of the uh, transmitter. And all those adjustments you saw in there are these, um, they're probably transformers. I was gonna say chokes, but yeah, most likely a little transformers there. And we got a transistor there on the heat sink. So that's definitely the uh, transmitter transistor. We see we've got that trimmer capacitor right there. Bunch of trimmer pots. There's a little less in here than I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see like a bunch of transistors. But there's only, appears to be one, two, three down here. And then on this other side, we got that four, five, and six. And then we've got another uh, one, two, three right there. Four, five, six. This other little metal can transistor right there. That's actually labeled. That's a uh, 2N2369. So what I'm guessing is that each one of these transistors and the circuitry around it is basically a an oscillator so each one of these is a slightly different like frequency i'm guessing and then all that stuff is kind of uh, like multiplexed over here somewhere with the rest of the circuitry and that's what's providing the uh, six different uh, pulses for each servo and then the the rest of the uh, transmitter circuitry over here basically takes care of um sending that out like serially basically so yeah i don't really know how best to explain that that's probably <laughs> as good as an explanation as you're going to get from me i'm sure other people probably know way more about this stuff than i do and uh yeah so we can see how there's like a bunch of uh, potentiometers down in here where the uh, joysticks are so like for example this one here when we uh turn this like up and down this is this would be like the rightmost stick we see how this potentiometer there is um is moved uh, one way or the other and when we move this one like left and right then it's this uh, a potentiometer right there that also gets moved uh, left and right or rotated left and right and we've got another uh, this is one of the uh, the trimmers right there so that directly affects uh, this uh, potentiometer while some of the other trimmers like for example the one for the left and right here we see how this is going to move the actual potentiometer itself, and that's how it adjusts the trim. And the uh, same goes with like the up and down one right here. So as we move that, it moves that potentiometer right there to adjust its position just ever so slightly. And that's uh, pretty much how it is with all of these other ones too. That's for the, that would be for the uh, left stick over here. So we see right there, that one rotates this potentiometer. And then for the, throttle this one's pretty obvious right there goes up and down so we see we got this sort of like little toothed um, plate right there with this little spring-loaded piece of metal there that kind of has a that little wedge there that fits in between all those little steps so that's how it holds itself in position wherever you set it and see like that so that also has got its potentiometer back there and then it also has its uh it's trimmer like that pretty simple functionality all around right there and then right in here that's the movement for the for that meter in the front now some of you may have noticed that, that this is a six channel transmitter but technically this would be like one two three and four channels right there so where are the uh, fifth and sixth well that would be this one and this one right here so this one's just a switch that you can uh, turn on and off and I'm assuming that maybe that could be used for like landing gear, maybe, you know, to like pull it out or put it up. Not, I have no idea what it would have been used for back in the day, but that's my assumption. Or maybe just uh, some other function on the uh, 
little model plane there that you could turn on and off. And then this one here is um, basically just uh, this little knob right there. We saw the potentiometer on the other side, so I guess you could use that to uh, set something else. And as we can see right here in the manual, we see that this uh, snap switch, that's the uh, fifth channel. That's that little switch up there on the top. And then this uh, aux auxiliary lever, that's the uh, sixth channel. So yeah, that was this one right here. So that's how you get all six channels on this thing. Oh, and looking at the manual here, it also explains how the uh, trainer uh, controller works. This here would be used as the um, as the main controller, but the student transmitter, uh, you'd not install the antenna on. And so you use the cable here to uh, connect between the uh, two units. And on the student uh, transmitter, you'd have the uh, power switch off. So that means that the the uh, main transmitter would actually be providing power to the uh, student transmitter. And I was kind of wrong about that, saying that maybe uh, you wouldn't have to provide power from one controller to, to the other, but you do. So as it explains right here, the only time that the uh, student would be allowed to uh, transmit from this, um, from their uh, controller would be when the instructor pushes on the button that's up here on the uh, top right of the controller. That's the uh, trainer switch. So then the, uh, you know, the student or whoever's learning to uh, fly could uh, can take control of the plane. But as soon as the instructor lets go of that, in case, you know, maybe the student's losing control or something, then they're able to uh, regain control of it and use um, what they have and, you know, avoid like catastrophic damage to the, uh, the plane or whatever. And it also talks about how, you know, you should adjust both these controllers so that when you uh, use the uh, button there that the uh, uh, servos don't suddenly like veer off in like some, you know, other direction uh, other than where it's set. So... It required a little bit of setup in order to get both of these to work together. And we can see how we got the lines that come from this connector here that go off to that switch. And also we got this uh, blue and this green one here. And I think those are going to right there. So I'm assuming what they're doing is that when you push the button there to allow the student to take control, it's taking the oscillator portion of each servo and connecting it directly into the transmitter portion of the um, instructor controller. And that's how it's allowing the uh, student to uh, take over and fly the plane. And then as soon as the instructor lets go of this button here, it goes back into allowing the um, like the local oscillators right here to uh, transmit out the antenna. And that's how the instructor is able to uh, take control over uh, like quickly. So yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting how they did that. But it's also a very simple, which I think kind of maybe sort of validates what I said about how all the uh, different servo um, oscillators down here are all feeding into the other, uh, the rest of the uh, circuitry right there. And that's all getting uh, encoded into the signal that's, uh, or it's uh, getting multiplexed and then feeding out into the uh, rest of the uh, transmitter circuitry. Because there's, like we said, there's really not a whole lot of wires that go between the uh, instructor's controller and the uh, student's controller. So it seems that that would be the easiest way to do so. And just a quick little money shot there for the uh, transmitter transistor fanatics. We've got a 2SC994 made by Toshiba. And that's that metal can that we saw there with the uh, heat sink. That little thing right there. So this probably definitely produces a little bit of heat. And just one more tiny little quick thing before we end this video here. Turns out you don't need to remove these little side covers to gain access to the battery or the crystal. You just lift this thing up, push down into here, and this back cover comes off. And there you go, access to the battery and access to the crystal. All right, and I think uh, that's probably gonna do it for this one. That's what's inside of one of these old uh, Futaba six channel uh, transmitter uh, receiver kits. And as we saw, <laughs> a lot of old uh, components. And unfortunately, I couldn't uh, find like an exact date for um, any of this equipment, but it appears that maybe it was uh, stuff that might have been manufactured in like uh, mid 80s, um, early to like mid 80s or so. Um, so, yeah, there's like no date codes whatsoever that I could find on, on any of this stuff. Definitely uh, pretty uh, compact for the time. Everything's uh, all squeezed together, especially in the uh, like the old, uh, receiver and in the servos. Uh, I actually kind of like how this was uh, laid out right there. It's, it looks like it's a uh, pretty straightforward and how they got the. Uh, oscillators right there for the uh, servos all these little trimmers and then it all kind of like feeds off into the rest of the transmitter section so that's kind of a uh, neat to look at but yep that's going to do it for this one i uh, hope it was at least uh somewhat interesting and if you uh, watch to the end uh, thank you all for watching and i will see you guys around the bench